So when our request comes from 1.100 to the web server, what's happening is if we analyze this request, and I've got these arrows here to talk about it, we're saying destination, we want to reach 3.254 over here on port, let's say 443, which is HTTPS, and our source address is 1.100, and then our source port is a random port number. I just chose 4004 here just randomly, but it could be 4000. 40,104. And then when the server returns our web page to us over here and it comes back, it comes back to let's say it comes back to 192.168.1.100 destination port 4004 which is our random port number and the source port is 192.168.3.254 on port 443. So the source is 443. So when we wrote our access list statement, and our access list statement was like this, permit TCP n equal to 443, this is the source right here. So n equals the source equal to 443. And here's the source, the packets coming back from the server to us. In the source field, right, you have the IP address and the port number, right, let's say in the source, and 443 is the source port and so any IP address equal to 443 and this would take effect right here and the destination being the one network which is over here so that's what makes that that access list statement work now what would make this access list statement better is if when we put in this statement in our access list we put in the word at the end established and that would restrict port 443 coming through this firewall only if it's been priorly established if it's been established prior from within the network so the established keyword says hey we'll let traffic 443 or port 80 through the firewall but only if it's an established TCP session which has already been established basically from within the network and I can show you an example of how that works so for instance right now the assumption is that traffic coming from here into the network this way meaning coming this way on this arrow right if the source port is port 443 right or port 80 right it must be traffic coming from a web server or a secure HTTPS web server and so that traffic must have originated from within this network and is trying to come back from a request but without the established keyword that is not really can, that's not necessarily the case what if there's a hacker on the network out here let's say like this PC right here and it has some software or he's a programmer and he has some kind of software like this that he can create his own traffic he's able to create packets and he can masquerade as source port 443 and try to access the network right so let's see if we can give an example of that so for instance let's pretend we're a hacker right here and we're going to um, try to attempt to access the network because we know that the network is allowing ports 443 and port 80 to come across. Well why? Because we've basically put a rule in our firewall saying that 443 and port 80 are allowed and this hacker over here has figured that out so what we'll do is he'll create a we'll create, we'll click on this button over here which will create a complex PDU and we'll attach it to this hacker and this complex PDU what we'll do is we'll say okay it's going to be and let's say this hacker has figured out that we're allowing port 443 through the firewall right and it's it, this hackers figured out that there's an FTP server hidden over here in this protected LAN area and he wants to target it so what we could say is so this hacker our hacker is going to target FTTP or FTP at 192.168. let's say 1.254, right? And source IP address, let's say he's even going to masquerade as some other computer. 
let's say, uh, or let's just say he'll he'll masquerade as himself. So 3.100, right? And the source port will say he knows that 443 is being allowed across. So he's going to put his source port at 443 and the destination port as port 21. And let's just put a random size here for the, um, the packet, something lower than 1400. So we'll say size 777. And we'll say one shot. And we'll say four seconds, right? And what we'll do is we'll create this PDU. So we create the PDU and it goes down here and you can see that this PDU was successful. So it was able, so this PC let's say was able to successfully send a packet to destination port 443 right um, to 1.254. So this packet was accepted across the firewall even though it didn't originate from within here. It wasn't a request for an HTTPS web server. It was this computer trying to contact this FTP server and showing a source port of 443, right? So essentially, this is what happened. Contacting 1.254 on port 21 and then from 3.100 on port 443, right? But this traffic initiated from here, not from here. Now let's see what happens when we use the established keyword for the TCP established and see if that would that actually blocks this hacker once we've put in this command instead. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll open up our router and we'll type enable and we'll do a show run and we'll get our access list. Here's our statements and we'll copy those. Copy those and we'll put them into Notepad. All right. Okay, there's our access list statements, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to edit these. So now we'll say TCP any equal to www, but at the end we're going to say established, right? So established basically from within an established TCP session. And what this means is that if we look over here, an established TCP session is the, um, the ACL is going to check for a TCP control flag in the layer 4 segment of basically the packet. So at the layer 4 segment it's going to look for an ACK or a SYN or a RESET or one of these um, basically uh, layer 4 control fields right here inside of the segment and if it sees it it'll allow the traffic through. If it doesn't see it then it's going to know that it's not an established TCP session. So what we'll do is We've got this set up right here, so we'll highlight this, copy it, and we'll go into our router, and we'll say, and we'll say, no access list 100 to get rid of our access list, and now we'll put our access list back. So we'll paste it, and so now we've put in our four access list lines that we pasted in. First I did a no access list 100 to get rid of it, then I pasted my lines in, and now if we do a control C and a show run, we'll just double check to make sure it's there. Okay, there it is. There's the established keyword at the end, right? And now let's see if we can do that again. So now we'll go here to our hacker We'll put a complex PDU and we'll set that same scenario up. FTP, destination IP address. He's trying to reach our FTP server that's hidden on the protected network. And all right, and the source port. He's he thinks he can get in on 443. Destination port port 21, FTP, size of the packet and four seconds and we'll create this PDU 
all right and you can see there it is the first one was successful but this one's in progress so it's trying to contact and you can see that it failed so the first time it was successful the second time it failed because we put in the established keyword so only um, only established TCP sessions established from within the network are going to be allowed to be go through. So for instance, we can go to our 1.100 user here, open our web browser, and you'll see that it actually works from within, just not from outside. And you can see port 443 goes across nicely as long as the traffic has been generated from inside the network setting up an established TCP session and so then when it comes back across and crosses our access list it's a seen as an established a prior established session and the hacker over here who generated a packet uh, generated traffic with a source port masquerading as 443 they were denied